I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're delighted to welcome a wonderful author. His name is Bishop Michael Goings, and he has written a captivating book it's called Seed of Simon. In this powerful work, readers will embark on a journey with Raphael Smith, a young African-American man whose recurring dream connects him to the historical lineage of Simon of Cyrene, who carried the cross of Jesus. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Glass Link Solutions for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel. Bishop, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, uh, allowing me to come to be with you. Oh, it's my this pleasure. This is a great <laughs> time of year, the Christmas season, to talk about such an important work that uh, strikes at the heart of Christianity. I love the character of Raphael Smith, someone you basically invented to help tell the story of uh, Cy uh, Simon of Cyrene. Tell us a little bit about what your book is about. Give us an overview, if you would. Well, my book is about, of course, Raphael Smith. The plot is the fact that this young man, Raphael Smith, uh, discovers in a mysterious way uh, that he is connected to through having those dreams, that you, 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 those recurring dreams. He couldn't get past. He keeps having a dream of the Villa Della Rosa, the way of suffering. And then so finally he gives blood and uh, his blood helps to heal a man named George Clement from a, a uncurable disease cancer. And, and, and the doctor, the oncologist, that they were dumbfounded. What happened? And so they discovered that somebody's blood has some proteins and enzymes in it that worked a miraculous healing on this man. And it was Raphael Smith. He, at that point in time, didn't know his art and his heritage. But he finds out uh, in the process of time that he never got sick. He never got sick. His mother said he never had a cold, or never got sick. And so the plot is about him coming to terms with his heritage and why he has this miraculous blood that cures all types of sicknesses and diseases. And, 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 and this is the, the plot of it about Raphael Smith. He, he, he will eventually come to know that he descended from Simon of Sorini through one of Simon's sons, Alexander or Rufus. Uh, they were... Uh, their descendants were slaves that were brought to America way back in the day of the slave trade. And this is where Raphael descended from. And so in the process of time, Raphael uh, comes to understand and know uh, who his ancestor is and how he got this miraculous supernatural ability in his blood. That's the basis of it. And it, it, it takes you from one part to another and the uh, people joining up with him to help him and, and Big Farm pursuing him, wanting to capitalize and merchandise uh, <laughs> this, this blood, the inside, and the proteins in his blood. Amazing. It's an amazing story. Uh, it feels very real. Um, how did you come up with this great idea? I've always been a creative writer, uh, Mr. Crawford. I've always been a creative writer. And as a pastor, I've been a pastor for about 50 years. And 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 I did. I would say I say the Lord gave it to me. Mm. I, I give him the credit for it, and 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 I, I, that this would be a good plot of a young man who has healing in his blood, mm. and 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 that he connects back with Simon of Serene, and then that's how it took off, and it kind of it kind of it, it kind of wrote itself. Once you get the plot and the main characters. It, it just kind it, of flows. It, it, it right? writes itself, it does. Yes, yeah. it does. Absolutely, absolutely. What is the significance or meaning that you hope readers take away from the healing blood of Raphael? Well, the significance is that God can use anybody to work something miraculous and supernatural and that, that we all, if, even if it's in, in, in his blood or in our blood, there's something that we can contribute to help the betterment of humanity, mm. of bringing healing and help. May not be through healing, it may be through another area, but all, I believe that all the 
uh, the scripture says, all good and perfect gifts come down from the Father of lights in whom there is no vibration, no shadow of turning. So all of us have some gift, some ability where we can enhance and enrich humanity, especially in the time that we're living in now, when there's so much, so much, I don't know, hatred and so much war and carnage going on, yeah. especially when we look at what's going on over there in the Middle East with uh, uh, Israel and Hamas. Yeah. A lot of hatred going on um, and a lot of division and a lot of horrific crime taking place. Yes, sir. Yeah, a absolutely. lot of blood being spilled needlessly. Absolutely, sir. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. I also yes. found it interesting that um, Raphael's blood was of um, importance, um, had healing properties, uh, but so does the blood of Jesus. Absolutely, sir. You know, yes, so that's sir. the parallel you made as well. We drink from the cup each week, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So actually, actually, this is where he draw the blood is a the in the dream uh, that he had when Simon was carrying the cross, the blood of Jesus dripped mm -hmm. onto Simon's skin and penetrated. Yeah. And this is where the ability came from, the blood of Jesus. Raphael's blood takes us back to that, as you said, that atoning and healing blood for mankind and humanity that comes from Jesus Christ. So mm -hmm. it, it is an extension of Jesus' blood yeah. that changes his DNA and his blood. That's what it is. Yeah, and that's symbolic of that we can take the blood of Christ and we can take the body of Christ. Yes. Uh, through the Eucharist. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. sir. That's exactly that right. Wonderful, wonderful. For the folks at home who might never have heard it or have forgotten about it, tell us the story of Simon who helped Jesus along his route. Simon was a citizen of Serene, which is in North Africa. And he was a black man. Uh, uh, a man of color, and uh, he was at that place at the at the right place at the right time. The way of suffering, and he was picked out by the Roman guards. Jesus in his humanity, because Jesus was the God Man, and in his humanity was tired and carrying that the weight of that cross, and they selected Simon of Cyrene. The, the man of color, the black man, to pick up that cross, that heavy cross. So Jesus was exhausted in his humanity. And so Simon was right there on the spot at the right place in the right time. And he picked it up. It, it is if God ordained, divinely ordained for Simon to be right there. Yeah. Because God is sovereign and he lives in the eternal now. And he ordained that Simon of Sorini would be the man that would be there to pick that cross up yeah. and carry it for Jesus. And it's very significant because Simon was a stranger to Jesus. Yes, he was. Jesus had been betrayed by his closest friends. Yes, he had. So it's yeah. kind of a strange juxtaposition or paradox that a stranger yes, it is. bear the cross of Jesus yes. where yes. his friends yes. would say, I don't know him. You That's know? exactly right. They so, backed up from him. Yeah. They denied him. Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Denied him three times, right? They should be, yeah. should be. Peter yeah. should be. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The uh, concept of dreams in the book I found was very, very intriguing because I think a lot of people feel they connect with Jesus and God through their dreams. Uh, it, was that your um, motivation there? Do you believe that dreams kind of connect us to the spiritual world? Absolutely, they can. Throughout the scriptures, we see dreams, Old and New Testament. Hmm. God has dealt with man through dreams. And and even it says your your sons and daughters should prophesy. Young men should have visions. Men should have dreams. In Joel, so yes, even now he's he's speaking. Maybe we we're not interpreting, but he's speaking through dreams. He gives us dreams. Even Joseph, he, during this Christmas season, had a dream. An angel came to him in a dream and told him, "Don't be afraid to take Mary as your as your wife. You know, uh, because the child that she's carrying is child of the Holy Ghost." So yes. Dreams are a vital part of who we are and of how God deals with us. Not all of the dreams are from God, but there are many people even today that are still having dreams that are accurate and that's, that's informative and instructive to them. So yes, Mr. Paul, but God still deals with dreams. I've had dreams that was 
accurate and 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 and, and uh, uh, precise in what he was speaking to me about dreams. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. And if you've ever lost anyone in your life, they seem to come to you in dreams too, which is uh, uh, kind of a reaffirmation of the afterlife of heaven. Um, you know, because I certainly had that experience. I hear from a lot of my guests that after their mother or father or someone dies who's close to them, they come to them in dreams. So there definitely is a spiritual connection there. And like you said, throughout the Bible and throughout the scripture, dreams are mentioned. Tell me a little bit about your work as a bishop. You say you've been doing it for uh, a little while now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost 50 years. I yeah. I, I am uh, the uh, prelate, prelate of a uh organization called Fellowship of Interdependent Church of the International. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is it started right here in, in this little place called Dillon. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I serve as, first I serve as a pastor. I'm going to pass over two locations here where I am now and then in Florence about 35 miles away. But at the same time, I give oversight that requires me to make visits. <laughs> yeah. I've been to Africa, Europe, uh, India, several countries, oh man, going on 27, 30 years. My last trip was to Ghana. Uh, I'm almost done. That, that was uh, three years yeah. ago. July of last year. Mm -hmm. July of last year. July of last year, I went to Ghana and I've been to South Africa. I've been to Uganda. I've been to Zimbabwe, Zambia, Nigeria, in, in Congo, India. So a lot of places in my capacity as a bishop over churches, not just in these places, but throughout America. And I'm getting kind of old at it now. And I'm slowing down some. I can't ruin this whole I'm trying to I'm trying to train somebody else to go in my place. And I'm sitting back giving counsel and advice to those pastors and those other bishops that are under me. Well, it's a lot of hours spent in an airplane, that's for sure. And oh man, airport. yes. Sir. Yeah. Oh, yes sir. <laughs> exactly. Yes, sir. Exactly. You're right about that, sir. And there are other ways to spread the word of God and the words of Jesus, and you're doing that with your writing. It, is you, this sir. the first time that you've written a book? No, I've got half to my credit about almost 18 or 20 books, but most of them were fiction, a uh, non-fiction book. This is the first fiction book that I've written, but I've, I've written a lot of non-fiction books, you know, of a religious nature, of a doctrinal nature, of theological nature. Mm -hmm. And I finished a book uh, that I'm hoping is called The Last Prayer. I think this will be more intriguing to me now than the Seed of Simon. And uh, sounds, uh, can beautiful. I tell you about that? Can I tell no, you about tell that? Tell me book? about that. Sure, absolutely. That, 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 that book has to do with a, a man who wants to be a blood donor, an organ donor, mm -hmm. but, 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 but he don't go and do it. So he was at the Department of, of Transportation, a motor vehicles where he was getting his license renewed. And in the department here in, here in the state of South Carolina, they have the thing on the chart, be a organ donor. Mm -hmm. And that convicted him. And so he was moved by that to be an organ donor. He signed up to be an organ donor. But he prayed to God, Lord, if something happens to me, he said, let anybody who receive any part of my body, blood, retina, heart, liver, whatever it might be. He said, save him. So it's called the last oh. prayer. Wow. Because that was the last prayer he made. And the plot had to do with everybody who got some of his, some of his organs. God worked in a dramatic way to bring them to, 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 to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's a, that's a beautiful story. I mean, because I can't think of a greater sacrifice than to be a living organ donor. Yes, sir. It Absolutely. always amazes me when I read in the paper or see on TV that someone has donated a kidney yes. Uh, yes. Or, a, or, a, or a slab of liver to a yes, complete sir. stranger. I yes, mean, sir. And they're going through, you know, danger. They're facing death, You're suffering. Right. You're um, right. It's just right. an amazing sacrifice. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. But so that's what your, that story is all about. In your book, you will follow the people who receive the organs? Yes, sir. Every chapter is about a person who received an organ. Every chapter is a, is a plot, a, a, a lot of subplots, and it deals with uh, every person who receives the uh, an organ. There's a story, a narrative of how the Lord supernaturally brings them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
Amazing. Amazing. Honoring, honoring his prayer, the last prayer. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. And uh, when do you expect that to be published? Real soon, I hope. Soon. Real soon, I hope. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 yes, sir. I've, I've, I've done done the, the legwork on it and the research on it and everything. So real soon. I mean, I, I may be more excited about that one than I am about the Seed of Simon. Right. Well, this is quite an imaginative story. I mean, I think The Seed of Simon's a great book because- Yes, sir. I you, love that. You took, yeah, you took a historical event, a true life event, fictionalized it so people could understand it, relate to it in the 21st century better. Amen. You know? Yeah. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Right. Yes, you know, sir. By creating Raphael Smith, we're all Raphael Smith. We all- We all Raphael Smith. Yes, yeah. sir. You're right. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Wonderful. We Wonderful. all can relate to him. Yes, sir. How often do you write? Do you write every day? Do you try to write uh, in the mornings, evenings? Tell me a little bit about your writing habits. I, I write about it every day because apart from being a writer on theology or doctrine and a fiction, I'm also a newspaper columnist in our area. I write for two newspapers in our area. So right now I'm trying to finish a column that I write, uh, you know, for my local newspaper by Christmas, you know. So I write something every day. Yeah. I'm what? involved in writing something every day. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's great that you're writing every day. It's Like I said, you're spreading the word of the Lord by doing that for sure. Let's uh, give you a impromptu um, extemporaneous uh, writing assignment here or speaking assignment. Tell, <laughs> us the, tell us the state of Christmas 2023 as we go into Holy Week, as we've been preparing for a month now for the birth of our Savior, um, you know, we see a lot of wrong in the world. Uh, yes. Do you also see some right? Do you also see some light? Tell us a little bit about your vision for this Christmas. Well, there's always light because Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. And we who embrace him, we reflect that light. We're not the light. We are reflected of that light as the moon is of the sun. And in spite of all the negative, the chaos, the carnage that's going on in the world, oh man, it's dark. But there's yeah. light. There's light. And 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 I, I believe that the light is centered in those who embrace Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. As a Christian, and from a biblical perspective, I have a biblical worldview. And I, I always believe that there's hope. And that hope is centered in Jesus Christ. And 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 darkness is just the absence of light. And I believe that when we as believers regardless of whatever denomination or background might be, who embrace Christ, and we would take the covering off of that light, which is Christ. In him was light. Mm -hmm. And the light was the what? The life of men. The light is the life of Christ emanating, radiating, being personified through us, wherever we are, on the job, in the home. We are that light because of Christ in us and the Holy Spirit and the word of God that we're supposed to be walking in. So in spite of it, all it takes is a little uh, is, a, is, a, is a little light to light up the, the darkness because darkness is the absence of light. A little light can dispel a lot of darkness. So if, if we can embrace that, uh, uh, Mr. Logan, mm -hmm. we can begin and we can show love because I believe the greatest way of showing Christ is to show love. Yeah, really. Look, Christ was the the embodiment of the Father's love to humanity. And when we show love, by this shall all men know that you are what? My disciples, my followers, my pupils. If you have what? Love one for another. Agape love, which is unconditional, sacrificial, selfless love. And so this light, this light, but too many of us, we're not allowing it to emanate, illuminate from us as believers and as Christians. But I'm hopeful. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. And, and I know that in the end, the light is going to win. In the end, life is going to win because of Christ. I believe that. Yeah, I believe that too. Um, there is a lot of darkness. There is a lot of yes. evidence of the devil in this world yes. right now. Yes, sir. Absolutely, but I do sir. believe that when all said and done, you know, most people are good. Most people are great. Most people will give you the coats off their back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a small mm -hmm. percentage of people who pollute our society with hate and with crime and with violence. Um, and they get a disproportionate amount of the attention, unfortunately. They do. They and do. they do poison our society because, yes, uh, you know, it does take just one bad apple sometimes to spoil yeah, it. I was thinking about that same analogy, <laughs> one bad apple. 
yeah. and you know, uh, bad news, bad news is more popular than good news. Exactly. They were the, I'm saying, they were the experiment to try just having a channel with good news. It didn't last. Right. That channel had to go out of business because people are fascinated, captivated by bad news. Right, right. And divisive <laughs> topics. You know, that, the, right. click, the clickbait out there of, you know, you go through your Facebook feed and all of a sudden you see, well, this mayor of this town did this and the president, whomever did this. And you're like, yes, sir. You really? Huh? You know, they engage it, you with anger. I mean, That's anger it. is a very strong emotion. Yes, it is, sir. Ask any strongest. football player. That's what do it. they want to do? They want to be mad when they're out there and they're playing. That's right. That's right. Like That's right. Strong. And love is a strong emotion, too. Uh -huh. But for some reason, with the wiring of our brains and the way social media works and the way newspapers work and the way clickbait yeah. headlines work, the negative tends to get the attention. Like you said, it does. good news stations go out of business. Well, you're spreading good news. I mean, I think that's the name of the uh, New Testament, right? Good news. Yes, it. Yeah, good absolutely. news. Good, the gospel means news. I, I have a saying, Mr. Croft. I have a saying. Uh, it goes like this. There are two natures beating in my breast. When it's foul, when it's blessed, when I love, when I hate, the when I feed shall dominate. Most people, even if they are believers, feed that old nature and it dominates. That old nature will dominate. The one we feed will dominate, whether it, whether it is that new nature, that good nature, or that old one. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Uh, that's a perfect mantra to keep in your head about, you know, we have a choice whether we're going to do good or we're going to do bad we do. because we sure both do. natures are within us for sure. They are within us. They are yeah. within us. And we have to always appeal to our better angels. That's Amen. for sure as well. Amen. I lived in the South for a number of years in the 90s in Atlanta. And okay. I love living in the South because there's such a great um, feeling of faith, um, of Christianity. Yeah. Uh, people... Yeah in the course of their conversation, we'll speak about the Lord, uh, things you don't yeah. hear up North, things you don't hear out West. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and so it, it's really great living and working in the Bible Belt. The Bible um, Belt, that's what yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and it's faith affirming when you see the families dressed up to go to services on Sunday and joining together with aunts and uncles and grandparents afterwards for a meal. I mean, because that's what life is all about. When it comes down to yeah. it, it doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't That's matter right. what kind of house you live in. What matters right. is, are you going to get together with your kin and have a great meal? That's right. That's what services. it's all about. Yeah, You're right, sir. You're absolutely yeah. right. Absolutely. Will you be giving a, uh, a sermon on Christmas Day, sir? I sure will. And what do you think the, the uh, message will be, if you can give us a little preview? Well, I've been working on the characters of Christmas and it's going to be something that will complement and continue that thought, the characters of Christmas. And I may, I may bring bring the culmination in on Christmas morning uh, when I will bring my message: joy to the world, the Savior is born. Joy to the world. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, beautiful. Uh, your your uh, congregation is blessed to have you as their leader uh, because you've got a great heart, you've got a great mind, and you're very articulate, very eloquent, and a wonderful writer as well. Thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you, Mr. Logan. And I, 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 I just like interacting with you because you know how to bring out the best. I appreciate <laughs> how to answer that. the questions and bring out the best. <laughs> I how long have you been that. doing it? How long have you been doing this? Uh, if I told you I was doing it 41 years, would you believe me? Yeah, because I've been pastoring for 41 years, but <laughs> preaching for about it. So we, we counted together there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I started in TV news in 1983 at CBS. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So. Oh, man. Long time. Believe it or not, I turned 72 the 11th of this month. Well, happy birthday. Happy Thank birthday. you, sir. Yep. Thank you. Happy Thank birthday. You. But it's a great journey. You're going strong. I'm going strong. That's good, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. That, that's good. That's absolutely. Good. Absolutely. My, uh, Bishop Michael Goings has written a captivating book it's called Seed of Simon. It is a powerful work. Readers will embark on a journey of young Raphael Smith, an African-American yes, man whose recurring dreams connect him with a historical lineage of Simon of Cyrene, 
who carried the cross of Jesus. It's an remarkable book. More great books are coming out from the bishop as well, including The Last Prayer, which is a book about the greatest gift one human being can give another, and that's a gift of life, a gift Amen. of body parts, organs. Amen. Amen for sure. Bishop, thanks again for joining me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, on Spotlight.